In this video with the On King, I'm going to go over how to decide on a specialty, which is a key part of applying and matching into residency. You have to decide which specialty you want to go into. Uh, we do have lots of social media channels and our YouTube channel here. Please subscribe if you like this content. We also, you can see the link here and our Patreon if you would like to get individualized help as you're going through this process. Uh, so with that, let's get into how to decide on a specialty. So you want to be a doctor, you just don't know what kind. Don't worry, that's you're not the first person that has crossed this bridge, and you won't be the last. Uh, there's a lot of great specialties out there. In fact, I, I truly loved all of my rotations and could find myself happy in many of them. Um, but it is fairly, fairly difficult when you're early on. So I want to offer a few pieces of advice. Uh, there are a lot of other great videos out there that do like the fancy spider web charts and things like that. I'm not going to do that. I'll just give you some general principles and things you need to consider uh, that will help you narrow down your choice. The first thing you want to consider is do you prefer the surgical stuff or do you prefer the medical stuff? Um, and, and it's okay to prefer both. There are specialties like ENT, urology, dermatology. If you're like me, I actually wanted a little bit of procedures, but I also loved the, the flow of clinic. Um, so that's something you definitely want to decide. Do you Would you prefer actually doing general surgery and working in the abdomen, or would you prefer more of an internal medicine approach where you're treating things medically with medications and, and things like that? The next thing to decide is like what level of procedures do you like and how much imaging and, and pathology or histology do you want? A lot of the surgical specialties, you know, huge procedures, whereas uh, OB-GYN, you get pretty big procedures, but you also get a lot of little stuff in the in the office. Uh, whereas internal medicine, you're probably not doing a lot of procedures, maybe little things here and there. Uh, so deciding like where you fit on that spectrum is really going to help. And then how much imaging or histology approach do you want to have? Do you want to have some pathology? Like dermatology, you do get to do some, but you're not a pathologist. Uh, surgery, you're definitely going to be looking at radiology, but you're not a radiologist. So deciding those kinds of things is definitely going to be a nice step and pointing you the right direction. Okay, another thing, and I think this is really important, and I would put it actually very high up on the list. What do you care about your lifestyle? Uh, because a lot of these surgical lifestyles, your residency, you're going to be working 80 hours or maybe even more a week as a resident, and you're probably not going to work that much less as an attending. They're very busy people because they're in such high demand. Um, I actually had a surgeon tell me on my surgery rotation, they said, if you love anything other than surgery, you should do that. Uh, and I also heard a joke, if your favorite room in the entire hospital is the OR, you should be an anesthesiologist. If your favorite room in the world is the OR, then you should be a surgeon. Um, so just take that with a grain of salt, but you know, realize that you may love surgery, but you definitely don't want to work that many hours because you have a family or something. This is a really important thing to consider, uh, and I think it plays a lot into the role of burnout. The next differentiating thing that I would think is, do you prefer inpatient, do you prefer outpatient, or both? Um, if you do love rounding and you like working on patients in the hospital that are very complex and getting them out of the hospital, or do you prefer where you're just doing a clinic flow where you have 15 to 30 minute appointments with people, it's all outpatient stuff. Uh, I think that's a really important differentiating, but there's also plenty of specialties where you can do both. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind. Kind of along with that is how much patient interaction do you want and how much of a long-term relationship do you want? A lot of those inpatient specialties, you're not necessarily going to have that long-term relationship because you're going to get the patient in the hospital, treat them, and send them home with the hopes that you never see them again. Whereas with outpatient, you're going to have that long-term relationship with people. And I think some of the times that's why people end up doing both. Um, so decide, you know, how much of this interaction do I want? Things like emergency uh, medicine are, are really fun, but you oftentimes don't have that long-term relationship with patients that a lot of people really want. Uh, and then along with that, how much patient interaction do you want? Uh, things like radiology and pathology, you're not actually interacting with the patients a lot, um, but people really like that. And, and you, you're act, interacting more with the doctors and having intellectual conversations all day. Whereas if you're a pediatrician, it's going to feel like you're not having a very intellectual conversation most of the day because you're talking with five-year-olds. <laughs> um, so, so deciding what level of interaction you want is, is really going to be helpful for you kind of along the same lines is, do you prefer working with kids or do you prefer working with adults? Um, in both aspects, you're going to be working with adults because you'll be working with the parents in pediatrics, but deciding whether you prefer peds or, or, or adult medicine is going to be a helpful differentiating factor. In most cases though, and the reason I list this kind of towards the end here, is that you can do peds or adults in most specialties. So find kind of the field and the specialty that interests you more and then decide, do you want to go the peds route or the adult route? And sometimes you don't even have to decide until after you've actually finished your residency. But deciding earlier on, for example, if you wanna do pediatric emergency medicine, if you start with that going into residency, you'll end up doing less years in the long run. So it's just helpful to know. 
Okay, not finally, um, but we're almost getting to the last point, is how competitive are you? you? You need to realize that and how much time are you willing to put into this to be competitive? If you want to apply to something like dermatology or ophthalmology or orthopedics, it's going to be very difficult. Uh, you're going to have to put in a lot of time. Whereas if you want to apply to something uh, like pediatrics, it's not going to be nearly as competitive. The very last thing I would mention is income and money. It really should not be a driving factor. You're going to have a good income no matter what you do, and you're gonna to wanna to find what you love. If you don't love neurosurgery, it doesn't matter that you're making a million dollars because you're gonna be miserable working as many hours as they do. So I would put this as a consideration, maybe as a tiebreaker towards the very end. But for the most part, I would not be considering it. Find what you love and then do it. I've seen uh, I've seen pediatricians and family medicine doctors that make quite a bit of money uh, because they work in more rural areas or set up with private practice and stuff. So worry about that later. You can make it work. Um, do what you love and you'll be much happier. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at On King Med. Also feel free to reach out via email or check out our website onkingmed.com for more tips and tricks.